Today, I am going to test the Atomstack A10 Pro laser engraver. This machine is identical to the Atomstack X7 Pro. It just does not have the wireless connectivity. This laser engraver is a higher-end machine and comes with a dual-beam laser module the M50 that claims to have an optical output of 10 watts. I am going to put it to the test to see how it performs at laser engraving and laser cutting plywood, hardwood and acrylic and even stainless steel. I am also going to test how it engraves anodized aluminium, measure its laser spot size and compare all the results to other machines I have tested previously. If you decide to buy this machine, you can use my affiliate link in the video description below where I also put my discount coupons. I get a small commission which helps me make more videos like this to help you choose the best machine for your needs and get more discount coupons for you. This machine has very premium control panel with good quality switches which feel very high quality. The emergency stop switch is very convenient if you need to stop the machine in a hurry. This machine also comes with a detachable touchscreen display, which enables you to engrave stuff offline, without computer. The display is magnetic and can be fixed on the front panel box. The machine has limit switches, which is very nice. First let's make an alignment test to see if the machine can start engraving on the same exact position multiple times in a row. I start by engraving a word on a small piece of wood, then I manually move the laser head away and calibrate home position again. Then, I engrave the same thing two more times to see if the lines align. The alignment is perfect. This process can't be done with machines without limit switches and comes useful when making engravings in multiple operations. First, we are going to do the standard engraving test on poplar plywood. Since this machine has double the output power, I have used the modified test pattern I have used and explained in my previous video with the Nijay Master 2S Plus. This test pattern has some engraving speeds and output power modified to better suit the stronger laser beam of the 10 watt machines. The power scale test shows us how the engraving performance is affected at different speeds. In this test I have omitted the lowest speed and added a higher speed of 3000 mm per minute because at low speeds this machine has burned through the material very easily. The interval test is especially good for determining if the machine has a square or rectangular laser spot shape as it progressively increases the distance between each engraved line when scanning horizontally and vertically. Here I also had to reduce the power levels for each set. The photo engraving test is there to see how much detail you can get when engraving a photo. The results are good. This machine has a lot of output power. Let's compare it to some other machines I have tested previously. Notice that only this machine and the Nijay Master 2S Plus are 10 watt machines and the test pattern used here is modified for use with higher power. This machine does not have the best air management as it leaves a lot of smoke stains on the wood. Compared to other machines, this machine performed worse at lower power but this could be just due to the module driver circuit having a different response curve. You can compare the results of all the machines I have tested on my website hobbylasercutters.com. Link in the video description below. Next, I engraved the test pattern on black anodized aluminium. This test showcases the engraving precision, laser dot size and shape, and overall laser output power. The main feature of this test is the interval test in vertical and horizontal direction to further evaluate the laser spot shape, as the engraving on anodized aluminum comes out very crisp and detailed, and therefore it is easy to clearly identify the laser spot shape. Compared to the Nijay Master 2S Plus, the engravings look more balanced in both directions, which means that the laser spot size is more rectangular.
let's see the details with a microscope. There are quite a lot of vibrations visible when engraving text. There is way more vibrations compared to the mechanically similar Atomstack A5 Pro I have tested a while ago. I don't believe that this laser has worse mechanics. I think that the reason for this is because I didn't adjust the X-axis rollers tight enough. I am sure this problem can be solved easily, and the problem is not due to the machine's mechanical design. The next test on the list is the focus distance test. I start by placing three 3mm acrylic sheets on the laser bed and place the wood board on top. Then, I focus the laser optimally and engrave the text and the first square with 0mm written in it. 0mm is the optimal focus. Then, I keep removing the 3mm sheets one by one without readjusting the focus to see how the laser beam shape looks further away from the optimal focus. Compared to the Nijay, the Atomstack has a smaller laser spot at shorter distances, but overall, the Sculptfun S9 is still the clear winner. And now let's see how Atomstack A10 performs at cutting 3mm, 6mm and 10mm poplar plywood boards. Here I have noticed one thing that bothers me. The protective glass is very reflective, and it is very difficult to position the laser spot on the workpiece. I have removed the glass for easier work, but it is very important to always wear quality safety goggles. I have put a link below for the pair of very good safety goggles that I use instead of the cheap glasses that come with the machine. I run the cutting tests at 300, 600 and 900 mm per minute, both in horizontal and vertical cutting direction. I will not include clips of all the cutting tests in this video, but on my new website hobbylasercutters.com you will find detailed images and results of all the tests I did. This machine cuts very well. Here is a table of results. Here is how the results compare to Nijay and the Sculptfun S9. I also tested the performance at cutting pine, beech and oak hardwood. I also tested the performance at cutting 3mm and 10mm black acrylic at 600mm per minute. It took only 4 passes to cut 3mm thick acrylic. Then I tried to cut these almost 10 mm thick piece of black acrylic. It took 36 passes for the 10 mm acrylic board. This means that the machine can cut thick acrylic, but it is a bit unpractical for bigger cuts.
Lastly, I tried engraving the stainless steel that I blackened with a black spray paint. I used a very slow speed of 200 mm per minute and full power. The engraving is quite dark. This machine can definitely engrave stainless steel. The Sculptfun S9 is a clear winner when looking at the focus spot size. This is why the S9 is a such a good cutter, despite having only half of the output power. I have also tried the offline engraving capability. Using this feature is very simple. In Lightburn or Laser GRBL you first set up the engraving parameters of your design. Then insert the included SD card reader in your computer and save the G-code. You can use the frame function to see where your engraving is positioned. During the engraving process, you can fine-tune the engraving speed and power in 1 to 20% increments if needed. You can find a purchase link for this machine in the video description. Thanks for watching and subscribe for more.